All right, y'all, so we're back with another base video, and this one will be talking specifically about Brett, um, because I was actually pretty harsh when it came down to Brett before, because I was actually just diving into meme coins and diving into, into the communities and learning the, this stuff and really going hard. Over the last few months, I've really dove heavily into Solana. I've been a part of a lot of different coins a lot of different projects i've been rug pulled i don't know how many times like countless times literally countless times um but i mean it's just part of your tuition when you actually want to elevate get to the next level and learn through experience i mean that's just a part of anything you have to take the time to get that experience and if if at one point in life i i, I feel like the way that i look at things my perspective is if i would have paid like fifty thousand a hundred thousand dollars to go to college why wouldn't I spend a few thousand to, you know, to, to actually learn a skill that I can take with me that's going to be lifelong? Now, meme coins, not necessarily, but I also have been diving very deeply into trading and I've been doing very good with that. So, um, yeah. But that being said, we're going to be talking about um, base because I think that it's a much bigger opportunity than people may realize. And Brett is actually the first project on base to hit or oh, the first meme coin on base to hit a billion dollar market cap which is massive it's huge it's very difficult for meme coins to hit a billion dollar market cap and what i'm hearing as far as what people are expecting on the low end and what people are expecting on the high end it's pretty insane so on the low end people are expecting a 10 billion dollar market cap which is damn near a 10x from here um so a 10 billion dollar market cap would be insane if this project could actually make it to that but, and I believe we saw Dogecoin well over like a 20 billion. So it's not out of the realm of possibilities. There's a lot more money now. You've had two cycles for the Bitcoin people and the Ethereum people to actually, you know, accumulate a, a massive amount of wealth. So you, now that people have more money, it wouldn't be a, a stretch of the imagination to think that they'll put more money into crypto because crypto is really what made these guys, a lot of these guys, who they are. So they, they, they're trying to double down. They're more than likely trying to double down and make a lot more money um, in, in this bull run. This is when people are making massive amounts of money during bull run. So, yeah, I was super harsh um, before because a guy named Crash was actually exposed for being an influencer, but not being completely honest and trustworthy. Now, one thing that I've learned about projects is influencers, while influencers are very, very important, an influencer alone does not dictate the success of a project. Um, they, what, what, the power of an influencer and how it impacts projects is they can keep the base, the base members and people calm, informed, and they can keep that foundation strong. With a strong foundation, that leads for the opportunity to for the coins and projects to have a lot more growth because any in any project the base is the most important part you have to the, the the core holders have to believe and not be selling that way it can start pushing up and more and more people can jump on board otherwise you get a pro, you get projects where things will start to take off but but you have a weak base and someone just sits here and dumps their whole bag on the project and that basically starts a spiral of everyone else selling who just got dumped on. And it, it can kill a project very fast. So, yeah. I was naive enough to not realize. And I think a lot of people may not know this about crypto, but all of it is really controlled. It's all organized. There's different factions. There's different groups of people that control the entire space. Um, and that's that's when it comes down to meme coins. There's certain, there, there's like a few groups. There's one side, they control a bunch of meme coins. They're the ones pumping it. They bring that foundation to one side. You have a different group. They bring that foundation to the other side. These groups don't really like each other because obviously they're taking liquidity away from each other. So they're always at one another. So um, if you hear Pauly, I, I believe Pauly is one and Ansem. I, I think they're on two different sides and they don't really like each other, but both sides have quite a bit of power and quite a bit of reach. And obviously they're in circles, they have their own networks and things like that. So um, that that's basically how the game is played. The game is played in a way where 
groups of people are holding these projects up, helping them explode, and a lot of people make money from it. And now, obviously, these people aren't doing this because they care about the people investing in the projects. They're doing it for themselves. But the fact that they're doing it creates an opportunity. Like that, that's, that's what it comes down to. It does create an opportunity. So if you learn how to maneuver and make money with these guys, as opposed to trying to do things that puts yourself against whales and puts yourself against the people controlling these projects, you'll make a lot of money if you align yourself with them and understand their moves, understand what they're doing. Like you don't even have to talk to them, be associated with them. If you like just reading the charts, you can start to understand the strategies and patterns and the things that's going on. That's, that's the thing that I love about trading. The more experienced you become with trader, the more you fully can understand what is going on in a chart. You can read, you can almost see through what someone is thinking when it comes down to what's going on um, with a chart. So yeah, that is, it's really interesting the, the more that you dive into it. But that being said, I actually think, I'm actually of the train of thought that Brett might be able to actually hit that ten billion dollar market cap, and and even yet, like that, that was a, that was a low that I heard. That was like a more realistic expectation. Ten billion dollar market cap. Some people think that it can go as high as a forty billion dollar market cap, which would be damn near forty x from here. Which that that would be absolutely insane to get forty times your money from where this is right now would be insane. That would be huge. Um, but I don't, I don't. I don't, it's, it's still in the realm of possibilities. It's definitely in the realm of possibilities, in my opinion, because I believe that Coinbase is going to push the base platform very, very heavily. Like once the bull run really takes off, um, I think the, I think they're going to push things very, very heavily. And if, if you think that it's over, chances are right now, it's not looking like it's over, like the bull run is over. It's, it's really just begun. Like this is just a downtime. This is happens. Like Things go down. This is the time. This is a blessing in the crypto space and a time to, to accumulate. At least that's what I'm making. That's, those are the moves that I'm making. I'm still accumulating right now. I go into more details on my exact strategies, the thing that I'm doing, the, the, the things that I am accumulating. I go into farther detail about these things on the Patreon. But at the end of the day, this is really just a shakeout, I believe. People are extremely confident that we're going to get these new all-time highs and all this stuff is going to happen. Everything's going up. Everything is going to pump. Everyone knows something. When everyone knows something, do you think of the market makers, the people in control want everyone to be right? No, like they, the people in control don't, when everyone knows something, usually the group that knows everything is wrong. Like everyone that knows everything is wrong. Like, that's just how it is. You want to be on the opposite side of the masses. If if every single person in crypto thinks that we're going to the moon, then they, they don't want to take us to the moon. But once they start dumping things and making it the price go lower and stuff like that, then there's uncertainty, there's fear, there's doubt. Then that's when we're most likely to see a switch and we start going to the moon. Um, So th that's just really how the game is played. Like they, 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 they control the prices. They push things down when they want to. They let things rise when they want to. That's what happens. Everything is really is, is really controlled. Um, and and once you understand the game, it's not that scary. You just have to know how to get in at the right times and how to spot when these changes are coming are coming. And you have to be able to stay calm and know what to do when these situations occur. Um, I think so many, it's difficult for so many people because people are arguing about dumb stuff. People are still arguing about if I was profitable, if I was profitable in my last investment or not. That I, I got out of that investment two years ago. Why, why do people even care one way or another? But the fact of the matter is I've always been very profitable in every investment that I've made. I, I was, I started my investment journey in the stock market. And after those mistakes, I haven't really made mistakes jumping back into, well, mistakes to that extent. Like even the mistakes that I have made, I'm still very profitable while making them. Um, so let's say like last bull run, I, I got like a 20, 20, 20, 30 X, something like that. Like even still, yes, there's people who maybe have gotten a hundred X, maybe, maybe some people even got a thousand X or something like that. I could have been better. I could have known more. I could have been less foolish in some of the some of my thoughts. I could have taken profits at at much more logical places to take profits at.
but I, I don't harp on the things that I don't know. I just focus up and try to learn more. And that's what I've spent this boy run doing, being around the right people, being around people talking about growth, talking about success, talking about the market, talking about history, talking about the things that helps us become more successful and take advantage of this boy run. You can't be around people sitting here gossiping about a bunch of random shit. That random shit is not going to take care of you and your family. So you can sit around sitting here talking kumbaya, being around what you feel is good energy because you all are laughing about dumb shit, but it's not going to be funny when one of the biggest opportunities in human history that you could have been a part of passes you by and you were sitting around cracking jokes. Because you can track, cr crack jokes while you're broke. You can, you can crack. Things are a lot funnier when you're rich. Things are a lot funnier when you don't have to worry about how you're going to pay your next bill. I'm just saying. So I, I'd rather have a laugh from a penthouse. You know, like that, that's just my mindset. I'd, I'd rather have a... I'd rather have a different type of laugh, you know? And, and that's why that's really my focus. That's why that's what I go hard um, towards. That's why I'm also building a network. And truthfully, I do have a lot of hate um, that, that's always thrown at me and stuff like that, but I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm okay with that. And I actually love that because that means the people who actually take the time to join my Patreon, they're, they, they think different. Because if the masses hate me or the mass, it's not even really hate. People know that people know what it is with me. People know that I'm honest. People know that I can be trusted. They just don't like the things that I say all the time in a way that I carry myself, which is perfectly fine. I'm not here to kiss nobody's ass. I'm going to be me. Like I, I am going to do what I do. That's that's what it is. But the people who actually are in the Patreon, these are the type of people who don't care what the masses say. They they think for themselves. They 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 come and see for themselves. They experience things for themselves. And not only do they come, they actually put their money into things and and they experience gains, they experience wins, they experience losses sometimes. And I mean, it's not it's not many losses, but depending on your interest. If, if I've been in something for the last two months, you jump in today and you jump, and, and you know, like, the entrance could be very much different if you didn't get in to certain things immediately. Like, and that's, that's the difference. Like, that's what, that's a lot of difference that separates me from a lot of people when it comes down to the VV success. My entrance, I was one of the first ones in the community. Um, that, that's, that's, I had some really good entrances. So, um, yeah, that being said, um, there's a lot of opportunity. You need to be around the right people and learning this stuff. There's people you can follow on Twitter. There's people tweeting about this, posting about this all day long. Now there is a lot of people who's just full of shit on the on social media. That's that I mean that's a part of social media. But realistically, a lot of people are making money. Even the people who's out here saying a bunch of nonsense, a lot of them are making money. It's just a matter of learning how people operate and how people make their money. You need to know if someone's the type of person who's making their money off the backs of other people. Because a lot of people make their money by promoting something and then dumping on the people that they're, they're promoting it to. Personally, I don't have to move like that. I don't see why people take that approach when you could literally just have get a group of people and help them all level up and make a lot of money in a project. And now you have a super team on your side. So with this super team, you can go a lot farther and accomplish a lot of things. But... That's besides the point. My biggest point here is that I think that this is just the beginning. I don't think that the bull run is over. I think this is just the start. And I think that we we are definitely going to see Brett go to some insane highs. I don't know where the high is going to be. If it's going to be a $10 billion market cap, if it's going to be a $40 billion, if it's going to be higher. But I think a minimal of a 10x is crazy. A 10x from, from right here, you could get a 10x. Um... And it does, it's not not like you have to just sit here and bet everything. You don't have, like, what people don't realize is how far it, you could, if you put $100 in, 10x $100. I mean, that's some decent money. For all you do, all you did was sit your money somewhere. All you did was sit $100 somewhere. Like, people think that they have to go in and put thousands everywhere. Like, when you mitigate your risk, you can put a lot of different, you can put your money in a lot of different places. There's, there's some projects that I'm in that's most likely to go up maybe 100x. And there, there, there's a few of these things. There, there's a few. Now, obviously, I don't talk about everything publicly because at the end of the day, I'm not going to just discuss all of my game, all of my sauce and all of that stuff just publicly. I, I give a lot and people can honestly make a lot of money 
knowing a lot of the things that I even discuss here on YouTube. Um, but the exact things that I'm doing, my money, how I'm moving, how I'm operating, the, the exact returns and stuff that I'm getting and, and the people that surround me getting, it's nobody's business except for those people that's around me. And, and it's actually a part of my circle and a part of my network. So that being said, Brett is an opportunity that I believe on the base chain. I do believe we're going to see the base chain rise into prominent prominence. I believe that the Bitcoin Solana has been dominating this entire bull run so far. Solana has been killing it. I don't see Solana slowing down. I believe that Solana will continue. I think that Solana is still a lot of money to be made over on Solana. But I also believe that the Ethereum and Bitcoin people want to eat too. That they want to make their money this cycle too. So I believe that that money from Bitcoin is going to flow over into base. It's going to flow from Bitcoin to Ethereum. And Ethereum, you're going to flow over into base. Um, because base is the new biggest opportunity. It's something new. It's something fresh. And a lot of those fees over on Ethereum, yeah, a lot of the people who play play around on Ethereum and stuff like that, they have the money to afford all the fees and stuff like that. But no one wants to be sitting around paying all these fees, even if you can't afford it. So that leaves this new opportunity base as a big thing. It's going to be a very, very big deal. So I believe that the base network is going to be pushed insane, insanely far this bull run. And we're going to see some amazing things from some base projects. Um, I will be making future videos talking about some base projects that I am in, some base projects that I, I support and stuff like that. But yeah, like this was really just to talk about Brett. And, you know, like after doing after doing a little bit more um, due diligence when it comes down to some of the people holding the token, listen, everything is controlled. Everything is controlled, in my opinion. That's what I believe. This is the things that I've seen and experienced. I believe that everything is controlled. So what you can really hope for is something that's controlled and the 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 core, the foundation, those people are actually holding. That's pretty much the best you can actually ask for is that even though it's being controlled, it's being controlled by people who actually care to hold it and want to see it go far. If you have a team and a foundation like that supporting it, I mean, there's a chance that you can see some very crazy returns, which is why bread is being so it has been so successful. Um, and one thing that can be confusing sometimes if you're on Twitter and stuff like that, you'll hear one side complain about the other side or talk about the other side and how the other side is scamming people. And then the other side will talk about how that side is scamming people. And the fact of the matter is, depending on when you get into these projects, everyone who loses money is going to feel as though they got scammed. That's what it comes down to. There's going to be some people who comes in at the tail end of what you say, and they're going to always lose money. So to those people, you will always be a scammer. That That's it. That That's it. Like one recent, I just got involved in the project recently. I'm not going to mention any names. I told people at the very beginning of the project that the project was going to be a big deal. But I also said towards the end of the project that I was buying more, which I did. But even though the project tanked after I said I was buying more, some people got in for the first time after I said I was buying more. Some people got in for the first time. Now, I don't give financial advice. I don't tell people to follow my moves. But because I was already in from the beginning, even though it tanked down, it didn't wipe me out. I was so high in profits, it couldn't wipe me out. I was good. But the people who were getting in at the first time from like my, my, my later on time mentioning the project, if they got in for the first time, they just got in and took a big L. I'm a scammer forever in their eyes, but the people who got in the very first time they ever heard it come out of my mouth, not a scammer at all. Like I made them a lot of money. And, and that, so you have to realize it's always gonna be these sides. Anything can be a scam and anything can be an opportunity. You can literally have a team come out with the intent of rug pulling everyone. But as long as they don't do that thing where they freeze the liquidity and they don't allow you to exit, you could literally get in and then exit before they dump. And even though it was a pump and dump, you profit. So you didn't get scammed. So it doesn't matter. That's what that's what this game is all about, man. Some people don't want to play in this game and that's perfectly fine. Like it's nothing wrong with just holding good, solid projects, but the way that I feel like it's a lot of money that gets left on the table when you just hold one project and, you know, just stick with that the whole time. I think that it's, it's, it's not, um, I don't like to leave money on the table, man. I don't like to leave money on the table. So 
I'll play this game for as long as the meme ca the meme coin game is lasting. I'll I'll play this game and then I'll carry those profits from this game over into altcoins. And then after those altcoins have had their run, I'll end right back up during the bear market, throwing it into the um throwing it into things like Bitcoin and throwing it into things like Ethereum and stuff that I have higher conviction towards um as far as the long term goes. So the the blue chips. We're going from all I'm going from memes to altcoins to blue chips. And I've really dove, I've dove a lot into this strategy over on Patreon. Um, but yeah, I'm very calculated with the things that I do. Um, people, one of the criticisms that I get is, oh, Cavell only looks out for himself. I mean, who else is gonna look out for me? I've had myself my whole life, that's it. Like no one else is gonna come and save you. No one else is gonna come and change your life. So don't expect anyone to. I'm not gonna give more of a shit about you than I give about myself. I don't even know most of you. That like That's what you have to understand. People, us who make videos and we do this, yeah, I do this to help people. I do this to, to explain things and educate and try to bring some value to people. But at the end of the day, I'm not sitting around studying anyone else's finances. I'm sitting around making decisions that's best for me. The only difference between me and a lot of people is I refuse to screw people over. I will never intentionally hurt somebody. I don't need to. I don't get any satisfaction from bullying anybody beneath me. Or not, not believe, and not only mean it in an egotistical way, but I mean, I mean, I get a, I get a rush taking on people with millions and billions of dollars, people who think they're so high above me, yet I'm smarter. Like that, that, that is what's challenging to me. Like, I, I don't, I like somebody who's supposed to be more powerful than me, them knowing that they can't really fuck with me. Like, especially like we can invest, but they can't invest like me. They can't make the type of decisions that I would make. And even if they can sit here and convince the masses and the, the, because they have a lot of money, they can always make the broke or the poor people. They can make people get impressed and side with them. But deep down, they be knowing they can't fuck with me. And I love that. I love that they know that. I love that they hate me. I love that they, they spend their time tweeting about me and all this stuff. I love having them in their feelings. That, that that's, that's what I love. So that's what gets me my rush. That's my personality. I'm that type of person. Sitting here and going against people who's technically on my level or maybe below, like I get nothing from that. I, I shoot for the stars. Like I'm, I'm, going, I'm, I'm going for the top. Like I have no interest in anything that's at the same level as me. I aim so much higher than the level that I'm on and that's why I rise fast. But that's just my mindset. That's just what I believe in. I like to, and I, and I work to make sure my mindset isn't a delusion. I work my ass off to make sure that I can actually live, you know, live and, and accomplish the things that I'm setting out to. So yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty much it though. Um, this was just, uh, you know, a little rant video talking about Brett, all this stuff, a lot of topics that I wanted to cover, a lot of information, a lot of alpha, more talks like this and a lot more in depth over on the Patreon. If you want that, I have more free content coming here on YouTube. Your boy is going to be back on the grind. Um, <clears throat> I think things are about to get started. Things are about to get heated up. That's why I'm back making content. Cause I'm actually back super motivated and inspired to actually talk about talk about crypto i'm actually loving the state of crypto and loving where things are about to go because i believe that things are getting scary right now and this is when a lot of people are panicking thinking oh i got scammed oh it's over with blah blah blah. everything is dumping down we're um we're just getting started in my opinion so yeah that's that's pretty much it let me know what you all think in the comment section down below fam um be sure to drop that thumbs up subscribe and turn on notifications so you stay updated with everything we're posting here on the channel and i will catch you all on the next one peace out fam